So in this video, we're going to look at importing the CSV file you get from Live Link Face. We're going to bring it into Unreal Engine and we're going to make a, uh, an assembly in the sequencer of the body and the face. And we'll add audio too. So let's check it out. So a CSV file is one of the things that you get in your Live Link uh, face application. So I have transferred a couple of motions over to my computer here. And Here's our CSV file. This is the movie file. Uh, we get three CSVs in here. The neutral one is the snapshot that you get if you calibrate, right? You get a snapshot of a neutral pose and you can see it's got a small file size because it's just one row. Then you've got a raw set of values and a calibrated set of values. Think of the calibration as like a filter. This is the filtered result and this is before the filtered result. So we're going to use the calibration file. If we look at it, it looks like this. We've got our timestamps over here, which is time code, including subframes. We've got all of our shapes along this way uh, and then our values over time. Now first, I'll show you what happens if you don't have the plugin enabled. If you bring it in without the plugin enabled, you'll get this data table question. This is the, the default behavior for a CSV file. So we don't want that. We want to enable the plugin for this, which I've got open over here, and it's called Live Link Face Importer. Live Link Face Importer. Toggle that on. Restart your app. If you bring this in with the plugin enabled bing bam boom you get a sequence and in that sequence is a live link object all of your blend shape names and the values over time and if you look at the curve editor you can see your values over time for all of these different shapes those are just the selected ones so how are we going to use this like i've got this thing uh but i you know what do we do with it i'll show you We've got a new level sequence, and we'll put the bag guy into this by adding this actor to the sequence. And then we need a few things. We're going to need to put our animation on this bag. Maybe uh, it's going to be helpful if I point out how this character is set up. So if I go over to the viewport, but I have an option here, source visible, and if I toggle that on, you could see there's actually two skeletons. In fact, there are three skeletal meshes here. This one here is just drawing the outline, safe to ignore. This one here is the bag that we're going to render, and this is the skeleton that we're going to put the motion onto because there, these two skeletons are linked by using an IK retargeting setup. So we're going to put our motion onto this skeleton, and it's going to drive this. Uh, I'll show you a little bit more. We also have on the root of this some other exposed variables. Source visible, live link body subject, and live link face subject. And we have that so that when we select it in the outliner, we can choose whether or not the source is visible or not, whether we are going to drive this from this source or that, and same for the face. So we can change those if we want to in our scene file. And that's making things quite handy. The way those are set up is quite straightforward. We've got a construction script uh, that first uh, sets the outline to follow the bag. Here is the bit about setting the visibility with this toggle. And here is the bit about the live link setup. It's a function called on the construction script. And the function gets the animation blueprint for a particular one. And, if, and then it does a cast. And then it sets the value inside the animation blueprint. So let's look at the Leo animation blueprint, which is this one. So Leo is the performer who drives this character. Double click. And we could see it's a very simple blueprint with one live link pose here and this one for a single hand, which is uh, what we ran with the last time we were recording because uh, one of the hands was broken. So we just use a single glove. Uh, but ignore that. This is the part that's happening that's causing the, the body to move. We get the live link subject and then we move the body. So this is where we set that live link subject and we do the same thing for the face. So the bag also has a blueprint which we can look at. And it's this is where the live link subject gets set for the face. Uh, we also can see 
in here that we're retargeting. The retarget pose for mesh and if we look at the options the use attached parent is the option that we're driving this with and use attached parent means exactly this kind of relationship. Uh, so that's that's how that's done. So all we need for this to work is for our live link subject to match. If we look at this level sequence we've got our bag and we need to set this with some animation. So we're going to get an animation track uh, and this is called nephew underscore T3, the one that we got from uh, from OptiTrack. So this is an exported motion from OptiTracks and imported through Byron's plugin uh, so that we have a timecode value set here, which is great. That means we can put this onto the timeline on that value, but we'll do that in another step. Uh, so this should move the body, but why, why don't I see the body moving? Uh, it's because we're still running the animation class here. So if I want to force this animation to overwrite that on this character, you right click and toggle force custom mode and then scrub and you'll see it will use the motion that we have here. And if we scrub along here we can see all that motion. Now we'd like to add the face to this and the way we do that is by taking this over to our sequencer and drag and drop and we get a subsequence and this should move the face but we don't see any face moving and that's because if we dive in here this is the name of the live link subject and if we look at this character so we're looking for iPad and if we look at the live link window we've got this subject here and this uh, this what this thing does is it makes it uh, emulates like a real live link and if we scrub or play we see that the yellow light turns to a green light meaning it's an active live link signal so I have uh, two choices to get this to move my face. One is I change this to the live link subject there, or two, I change the name of this with F2 to the one that my character is expecting. After this, the face should move. There we go. So that's, uh, that's how you get it going. Now if I want to use the embedded timecode, I can select these objects. Uh, and use this wrench snap sections to the timeline using source timecode and if I go down here uh, let's set these let's set the out time end time and start time and if I play through here these these motions should line up Uh, and you know you should see you know some some uh, vocalization with his face uh, and his hands around the same time maybe down here a little bit yeah now what would be great is if we could do the same thing with this audio file so if I bring this over to my sequencer and I just drop it in here somewhere and if I right click and look at properties I see that I don't have timecode values here, so I'm not sure why this isn't working right, um, but uh, this, you would just have to find the place for this, which it, in my case, because they're cartoon characters, it shouldn't be too difficult. Would convert. And second of all, I leave my guest. Would convert. And second of all, I leave my gas stove on all the time, so. So that's getting close. Let's see if this one helps. Yo. Yo. So it's just a little bit early, so we'll just do that. Yo. Yo. Another one. Yo. Yo. I don't know that place, I don't know that place was made out of wood. So, you know, I'm making cartoons, so it doesn't really, uh, it's, you know, it's pretty forgiving. Okay, first of all, okay. first of all only wood can burn. And second of all, I leave my gas stove on all the time, so. And that's pretty much it. That's how you get your things aligned. Uh, time code helps a bit, but like I said, until they fix the audio, it could be a little bit improved.
hope that was helpful and you know good luck out there creating hey yo did you see that burning building on your block the one with all the stairs i don't know that place was made out of wood what do you mean i always thought it was made out of bricks uh it can still burn they said it was a gas leak okay first of all only wood can burn and second of all i leave my gas stove on all the time so wait you what yeah, I got it on right now, keeping my little nephew warm. Oh my god, are you crazy? You could bring the whole place down. I am positive that, that building is not made out of wood, so we're fine, okay? It can still burn. We gotta go save your nephew. Would you relax? I made sure to put him in the bath before we left, so the fire can't get him. Oh my god. <laughs>